Football on Off the Ball with Sky. Watch big games from the Women's Super League live on Sky Sports. And remember that Off the Ball football on Saturday is brought to you by Sky. Don't miss Nottingham Forest versus Leicester City in the FA Cup this Sunday, live only on Premier Sports. You can text us 53106, tweet us at Off the Ball. We're streaming the conversation as well. Listen on News Talk, watch us on the digital and social channels for Off the Ball. For Periscope on Twitter, at Off the Ball, YouTube, Facebook, and on the OTB Sports app. Search OTB Sports in your app store to download it if you haven't already. Delighted to be joined on the line by the former Republic of Ireland international and European Cup winner with Liverpool, Mark Lawrenson, the UEFA Pro Licence coach Shane Keegan, and the ex League of Ireland and FAI Cup winner Graeme Gartland to talk about the beautiful game. Laro, we will start with Kidderminster. A oh, disaster. They lost 2-1. Declan Rice injury, injury time equaliser for West Ham. Mm-hmm. And then Jared Bowen has just scored at the end of extra time. Do you know what? It was a great, great cup tie. And when, when you factor in last night at Old Trafford with, with Middlesbrough as well, and I think have Chelsea gone through, they've probably gone through. Yeah, 2-1, now, one, yeah, against Plymouth. The, yeah, themselves. So... What 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 a good advert for the uh, for the FA Cup. We thought it was dead and buried, but certainly not. Kidderminster played brilliantly. They absolutely totally did. Um, just really really unfortunate. Declan's goal was just an absolute piece of class. Uh, Declan Rice's goal to just obviously take it through then to extra time when they scored so late again. But that probably tells you the difference, John. You know, in terms of um, concentration of defenders in the lower league fitness. And those kind of things, just at the two very key vital moments, they were just found wanting. But they were they were brilliant, honestly. The academies, they're fabulous. Your mate Moisey's got away with it. Yeah, I was <laughs> I was watching them. I was just about to text him, and I thought, no, I better leave it for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, you can imagine the reply I would get. Um, listen, they're through. That's that's all that he's bothered about. He's been through, he's been through, he's been in cup upsets himself anyway. He's, one thing that happened with West Ham, though, is that they, they were poor for large amounts of the time. But when it counted, they started to play. But um, this Declan Rice boy is some player, by the way. He'll be some, on the move. He'll be on the move, won't he, Laura? Well, you know, um, quite possibly. I mean, you might even get 100 million quid for him, which sounds ridiculous, doesn't it, for a kind of a, a holding defensive midfield player. But, um, yeah, he'll, he'll go somewhere big, or bigger, I should say, certainly. And... Um, I'm sure I'll get a text from Moyes now if he knows I've said that about him. Shane Keegan, uh, he's done the Gary Neville interview this week, so already he's um, put himself in the shop window. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, suppose he, yeah, he has, he has. No, I, uh, I saw a clip of it online, John, and um, uh, look, I don't think he'd be any Irishman's favourite cup of tea, I suppose, so he wouldn't. And in this clip with Gary Neville, he kept calling Gary Neville dog. And uh, that was enough for me. I couldn't subject myself to the full thing from there, so I couldn't, to be honest with you. Uh, some goals already in the FA Cup. Man City won Fulham 1. So uh, Fabio Carvalho for Fulham, uh, equaliser wow. from Ilgai Hundawan. So one all inside the first 10 minutes at the Etihad. And also 1-0 for Crystal Palace against Hartlepool with Mark Gahey scoring uh, for the Eagles there. So lots of matches going on. Everton, Brentford... A goalless, Huddersfield, Barnsley goalless, Peterborough, QPR goalless, Southampton, Coventry goalless, Seth Stoke against Wigan is goalless as well and also kicked off between Wolves and Norwich in the FA Cup fourth round. Cambridge against Luton later and Spurs Brighton this evening. Graham Gartland, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, Graham. And I suppose the big, there's a few things, we'll get to Roy Keane in a moment, but I suppose even the more recent news before Roy, if he gets that job at Sunderland or not, was Anthony Barry leaving the... Republic of Ireland set up going to be a coach now under Roberto Martinez at Belgium. I think it's a significant blow because it seemed to be from reading between all the lines, the players seem to love this guy as a coach. Yeah, yeah it's a big blow for Ireland considering like how well he was taught of. Um, obviously, the upturn and how Ireland started playing um, when he came in as well. There seemed to be um, sort of a turnaround in in their performances, which was which was n- quite no- noticeable with him coming in. Um, the way the players speak of him is telling that they, they, they rave about him, they speak really highly of him. The fact that Frank Lampard tried to take him to Everton as well means that a lot of people are thinking really highly of him. The fact Martinez then goes and headhunts him and takes him as well. So he's obviously a really top class coach. Um, so it, to lose your two assistant managers, your first team coaches in the first two years you're reign under Stephen Kenny. Damien Duff being the other one. Damien Duff obviously leaving as well. It was really tough for Stephen, um, especially with the impact that Anthony Barry has made. So it is a big blow for Ireland. Um, I know that they were looking at Lee Carsley before that as well and Lee's really well thought of over there, and especially with the FA in England. So it be interesting to see who they get into 
replace him because I do think it's a big, big loss. Does it inject pressure now back into the conversation with Stephen Kenny because he's got to find someone as good as Anthony Barry? I think you. I think you're always under pressure when you're in the in the job with with Ireland, and especially with the results that he's had, um, he's going to be under pressure. Um, the right appointment is is important because when you lose somebody as influential as Anthony Barry, you're going to have to replace him with somebody that can can fill that void, and that's where it does. There's always pressure on him, but there's probably extra pressure on this appointment, considering, like you said, he's gone through Damien and then he's gone to Anthony, and they've they've both they've both left now. So it is a it's a tough decision for Stephen to who he gets in, but um, I'm sure Shane probably has dealings with Stephen, and and he'd understand a little bit of how well he thought of Ant, uh, of Anthony Barry. So be interesting to see what he thinks. And Rory Higgins as well, the Chiefs got leaving to go to Derry in the last while. Uh, Shane Keegan, who's out there? First of all, Anthony Barry's departure, the significance of that. I remember talking about set pieces. I know you've done a lot of ta- tactical analysis on Anthony Barry and obviously Tuchel rates him and if Tuchel's keeping him, that's a positive for him. But Belgium, it's a World Cup year. Look, they're in the World Cup. They're the top-ranked team in the world, possibly an underachieving team in international football given the talent that they've had. But first of all, Barry's departure and secondly, are there you know candidates just on a list that Stephen Kenny can go for? Oh, look, it's an, it's an absolute killer, John, to lose him. There's no way, other way of putting it. It really, really is. Um, you know, as, as Graham has said there, you know, he just, you hear the players rave about him. Um, yeah, look, I would have, you know, in the last couple of months just had, had one conversation with Stephen where his name came up. And again, you know, without going into specifics, he was just raving about the detail and, and how thorough the guy is. And, you know, it's he's 24-7 football. He really, really is. And, it's annoying, John, that that I suppose I don't know the ins and outs of all the contract situations, but how we put ourselves in a position where like there's such a dearth of really top, top class talent out there that if you've got one at your disposal, surely you do more to make sure you, you don't lose him. How do you tie him down? How do you make sure that you, you secure this asset long term? Look, that might be easier said than done, but um it's a real killer that he can, you know, just up and leave and walk away. And you can't blame him. It's a fantastic opportunity for him. Um, I wouldn't point a finger at him whatsoever. Um, but just a really detailed guy, as you say, like those the set piece analysis. I think he did his 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 pro license uh, thesis, or maybe it was even a, an academic thesis. I'm not 100 percent sure on uh, on set pieces. I know doing the bit for the 42.ie that that. We, I did a, a um, an analysis on Liverpool Chelsea earlier in the season, and and Chelsea scored a set piece in that game, and uh, we rolled out the exact same set piece for Ireland um, a month or two later, and and again we scored from it, you know. So he's 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 obviously got some really good ideas in that sense. Who replaces him? I, I don't know. I really really don't know. Um, I had I had. Lee on on the podcast that I do for the lads, and he was brilliant. And it actually, it was Stephen that sent me in Lee's direction when I was I was on to Stephen about the podcast, and uh, he said, "Look, you should get Lee on it. He's 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 really really top class." So he obviously rates him highly, but there's no way we're going to be able to pull Lee Carsley away from from the kind of deal he's on with English FA at the moment. I'd imagine so. It's back to the drawing board. I, I'm. I'd be at a loss to throw any names at just off 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 the bat in terms of who we can bring in, John. I, I just uh, look. Stephen's a, obviously very 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 clued in guy. He's going to have to have to really really cast the cast the net out. He managed to pull it, a, a brilliant one off and get an Anthony Barry in the first place. Maybe he's got another trick up his sleeve to find an equally good replacement. How destabilizing, yeah. Lara? How destabilizing is, is to lose a coach like this? Oh, it's destabilizing. But I'm I'm listening to this and I'm coming to the conclusion that the, there was no buyout in his contract, was it not? He just walked away. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there was a contract because. Um, oh. You know, well, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd imagine a new, a new contract, contract, but I wouldn't think there's a lot left. Yeah, I wouldn't think there's a lot of left time, of time left to run on it, which means I'd imagine you know paying off the remainder of the contract or whatever they would have had to do. I, I don't know. Look, Dan would probably be well included, more included in, and that'd be interesting to keep an eye on what pieces come over. You know. Yeah. Have you, has that happened to you, Laura, when you've lost coaches that were so well regarded? Uh, no. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in, a, in a word, no. Um, I mean, the thing is at Liverpool, it was just a succession, wasn't it? And they would, um, you know, like the, as soon as I got there, Roy Evans was in charge of the reserves and it was just a given that at some stage he'd come through to the first team along with when Paisley went and Joe Fagan got the job, they all moved up one. That's Ronnie Moran as well. So Roy became um, one of the coaches, and then it, obviously in the end he became he became one of the managers. But I'm just thinking of all the other teams. No, I've I've, I've never ever had that before. In all honesty, when you when you think of what 
Mark said there about the FAI, like Robbie Keane is still under contract and Anthony Barry is out of contract and Anthony's the one that gets taken away to Belgium. You're thinking, how have the FAI allowed this to happen? That's It's a very good question to ask because you're like, why have they allowed the people who are that well thought of in the industry and all the players are talking about him to then run out of contract that he can walk away for nothing and the FAI don't get any compensation for him? It's a ridiculous scenario to find yourselves in as an organisation that you're not protecting your best assets, whether that's coaches. I know you can't protect players because obviously there's no buyouts and players in the international level, but in terms of your coaches, like it's really Maybe there's nothing they could do though, it's Belgium without the World Cup. Yeah, but you can still, if he's under contract, they still have to pay a certain yeah. amount of, if, to get him out. You can't just take somebody well, if they're under contract. Look, the other thing, John, would it would soften the blow in bringing the new guy in, would it not? If if it, if he'd been under contract, it, it would, it, you know, if if all just say, just say, hundred thousand euros, you know, at mm. least it, that if you're going to go and try and get a lead costly, then you can offer him a better package because you've got straight away you've got that money from Anthony Barry leaving and. It might just swing the balance. Shane, you want to come in there? Yeah, look, John, it should it should be absolutely no different than with a player at club level. If you've got a quality, quality player, you look. Let's take a, a look at the Salah situation at Liverpool at the moment. If you've got a quality, quality player who's rated really highly, and you need him to be part of your future, what's the first thing you do when he gets to eighteen months or so out from the end of his contract? You get a new contract in place, so he's tied down going in, going going beyond the end of that. You you never let a contract get to six, 12 months to its end because it's too easy to pay it off then at that stage. You need to be keeping 18 months ahead of yourself and, and tying, your, 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 uh, tying your quality down, you know. Well, Stephen Kenny, if it hasn't signed his contract yet, like it was offered by the FAI, I think they're, they're sorting it out. I don't think it's an issue of Stephen Kenny and all that, but it hasn't been done. Whatever reason, you know, it was offered, it hasn't still happened. Should it have been, should the whole team, Stephen Kenny, everybody else being offered the contract at the moment those that World Cup qualification campaign ended, Shane? Yeah, yeah, look, obviously, Anthony Barry's, you know, contract situation is a knock-on of Stevens. Um, we, I was about to say nobody gets a longer contract than their manager, and then I remember the situation we've created with Robbie. So that's not quite true. But um, in the previous, normally, in the previous regime, I would say, and in the previous regime. Yeah, yeah, um, but normally, obviously, the backroom staff is all dependent on you know what the the, the manager's situation is, which is the case in this scenario, and. Yeah, Anthony Barry's contract situation is obviously a knock-on effect of of Stephen, where Stevens is at, and that you know I think most people would be inclined to say that has been been handled superbly. Well, the other thing, John, as well, just I mean, you know, um, what, was he always was he always a good coach? Or has he basically got better w- with the team? And if he's got better with the team, and you know, the, the, the manager must surely go to the to the guys at the FAI and say, look, we've we've got a gem here, an absolute gem. We need we need to sort him out get him a proper contract and also look after ourselves. So I'm not blaming Stephen at all, but it, it sounds like it sounds like that's never happened either. But is it not a result, folks, of the fact that there isn't a 100% support for Stephen in the job? Yeah, uh, well... Yeah, you're right. That's, 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 that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uncertainty, isn't it? That's what happens. Well, yeah. uncertain, uncertainty creates conditions yeah. where uh, you have then a highly respected coach leaving. Now, whether it would have made any difference or not, who knows? Belgium, as we said, are going to the World Cup, Ireland or not. But it's all about, have you done every single thing that you could have along the way to make sure that even if Belgium do call, um, we're putting ourselves in the best position? I suppose that's the question well, we're asking here. Th- th- this game's hard enough, John, without, without slipping up with stuff like that, surely. Yeah. Roy Keane, uh, Laro. Should he yes. take the job at Sunderland if he's if he's offered it? He's been in talks. Yeah, why not? Why not? I think I think um, my my only worry would be I don't know if it's the chief executive or, or the owner at Sunderland. He might be one and the same person. Um, seems a bit flaky. I mean, obviously, previous manager Lee Johnson. He got what was he? They got beat seven nil, didn't they? Somewhere six nil, yeah. Six nil, sorry. And but he'd just taken two or three players in as well, hadn't he? Which obviously the the owner had agreed to to take them, and all of a sudden he fires him out, and you know that that they, I think they'll come up, and I just think it's it's a great position for somebody to go and take that job now, and he's still very well liked on uh, on Weir side, Roy, and I think you know you can be a pundit all your life and that, but I, I just get that there's something in him that he wants to have another go. I think he just feels that maybe, and he, he, he was successful at Sunderland at first, wasn't he? He got, he got the promotion. Yeah, in, in 07, right? yeah, in 07. Yeah. First, first the, season. And then, 
And then they stayed, they stayed in the Premier League, didn't they? Yeah, he was 18th when he quit in December 2008, yeah. OK, so, yeah, so it's not it's not a case like, you know, you're appointing um, Benitez or somebody like that. So it, straight away, if his local paper says, Roy Keane, we're going to sign Roy Keane, I mean, the whole of Wearside would absolutely love that. The players would like it as well. And and he will, he'll, will have mellowed from when he first started because, you know, you... You do learn by your mistakes in that job. You probably learn more about football through your mistakes than actually being successful. So if I were him, I'd, I'd take it. And I think, you know, Sunderland are the kind of place, and we've said this for a long time, you know, but once once it ignites and you can attract players, they could, they could go through the, the championship because the championship this year is unbelievably ordinary if, if of course, they get the promotion. So... Um, You'd be looking at it. I would go and go and take it. What, what's he got to lose? Because the worst thing that happens if it doesn't work for him, he'll still be a pundit because because everybody likes to watch him. Is the management too long, Shane? Um, I'd, I'll tell you, I'd love to see him back in. That's for sure because um, Why? it would be really, really it would just be so interesting, John, to see has he got the capability to to learn from previous mistakes. Um, I mean, he has spoken at times that, you know, he does believe the modern game has changed and that he would need to change. But he's just such a strong character. And, you know, our perception of him, you'd wonder, is he capable of change? Would his per- will his personality allow him to cha- change? He doesn't strike me as a guy who would be sitting down and writing down the list of the 10 things he did wrong the last time and making sure he didn't do them again. <laughs> Maybe he has. I don't know. Um, but I would have thought he'd be um you know very very strong in his own opinions i've heard him at times kind of partly say that he might have made an error here or there before then kind of actually pointing the finger of blame at a, a player instead or something like that um but i think it would be tremendous entertainment value to to see how he'd get on with another crack and it's a no-brainer that he has to take it i mean they're in a, yeah. a really really good position in terms of him coming in there and, and and having a real real impact on the club he could absolutely get him up straight away and like the impact he had first time around when he took over was incredible i think he took him over near relegation zone and got him straight up did he yeah he did yeah. he did yeah. yeah that's correct it's now or never yeah yeah i, I do feel it i do feel he yeah there's nobody else really sniffing around him too much i know he said he on the interview done with Gary Neville that he had a couple of meetings with clubs and chairmans and it probably wasn't the right fit like he probably feels he has unfinished business at Sunderland as well because obviously the new owners came in at the time and upset uh, how he was running things and that's why he he left uh, the first time so he's obviously well thought of up there as well he has a good affinity to the club so He's probably going to have a go at it. And like Laro said, he's falling back into sky if it doesn't work out because like everybody likes listening to him on a, on a Super Sunday and, and the punditry does. So um, the way the modern game is as well, he, he will have to change on certain things and you might just need to, sometimes you need to promise players to, to get the best out of them and, and, and do what you can. And I'm not, I'm not sure if that's something that sits well with, with Keane, having mm. seen him on, on TV and the way he talks. I don't think he'd be willing to say things just to get performance out of a player, but sometimes you just have to do that. And if you have to be ruthless with them, you do it after they've probably got you promoted or, or, or played, got you up a division, and then you might go, right, I'm not having you, move them on then. But um, yeah, like I said to you, he's box office, isn't he, when it comes to things like that? And he'll, he'll increase the interest in, in, in League One. All of a sudden, th- that will go through the roof as well. So it is now or never for him. And it'd be good to see him back in because, like you said, he, he's a, he's an interesting watch. Andrew Conway. Tell you what, Whoa, just, just one sec, folks. Um, oh, Andrew Conway scored a try for Ireland and has been converted by Johnny Sexton. 17 points to nil now. Two tries on the board against Wales at 45 minutes into the Six Nations game uh, at. Lansdowne Road uh, we got also Scotland and England at Murrayfield from 4.45 I'm just pulling up the uh, Irish Gold Cup but there's been a 20 to 1 winner an outsider uh, coming in and that's so we'll come back to you in a moment about that one um, just just Laro there you want to come yes. in there on Roy Keane yeah no I think I think uh, I, th- I think if he does take the job Roy I, th- I think he probably would need with him now a father figure um, someone who'll just maybe say to him, not not agree with him all the time, and just and just put things across to him like, you know, you're really sure about doing that or whatever, or and have somebody in the office with him as well when when players come in because basically you can't you can't brutalise players anymore. You've yeah. got to be very 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 careful because they'll go away and cry to their agents and stuff like that. So 
I would, I would, I would Doesn't like he... to see somebody in there with him who's been there, seen it, done it, and gives him something else to think of at, at times. Who, I who do that, you think could do it for him? Sorry, who do you think could do that role for him? Like, who do you think he'd what, sort what of listen to? One? This, this is a bit left field. Martin O'Neill. Yeah, yeah. But does Roy not want to be his own man now? Is that the whole point of Roy now well, being he, back he to number still, one? Well, it can still be his own man, can't he? But you know, it's and you know, Martin's a very, very clever guy, and um, is, is really, really good with people. And they've obviously got a really good relationship. It doesn't really matter that it's flipped. Martin's not. Martin's not the kind of person who like wants to boot Roy out and, and take the job. And it, I would, I would imagine he would absolutely love it. And he's he's really, really good. With, with, with people, Martin O'Neill, and he, you know, with Roy, I think it would be a really, really good partnership. I was actually going to come at it from from the other side, uh, similar ish point to Laura, but I was I was actually going to say I think Roy, the really, really big thing would be who Roy brought in as a coach. Um, you know, Graham's been there. Obviously, the 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 guy who's number two to Roy Keane, I think, would have to be Yin to his Yang. You know, I, I think he needs to be the on the training ground sort of fella. He needs to be the one that the players get their energy from and, and, and feed off and kind of have their day to day communication with. Because I think Roy needs to be a bit more sporadic in terms of his, his communication. Yeah. yeah. No, I yeah. think it's a fair you can You can have all three. Yeah. I think you yeah. need it. You see, what, you see what Lampard's done with, with Everton, where. I think he's brought in a lot more of his own staff than he probably did at Chelsea at the time. I think he only brought in Jody Morris. Um, where at, at Chelsea, you see him, he's brought in uh, Clement, he's brought Ashley Cole in, he's brought another coach in from Chelsea. He's brought in a bigger team around him this time to make sure yeah. that he has a lot more voices and bodies around the group that are his and that he can trust yeah. rather than I think probably... Paul Cle- I think Paul Clement's a, a good selection, yeah. really seriously do. And then you obviously Ashley Cole and... and uh, Duncan Ferguson is still there so there's a bigger pool of staff there and I think that's the way the game is listen I, you see Man City and they roll out 30 staff whenever they win a game and you're like <laughs> I don't know how do you have that many staff but you can see that that's where it's going that you have well he's the voice behind it but I think if Roy had that sort of staff where he has four or five people look that, at Gerard. Gerard has completely like, that's he's, a, yeah. he's Michael Beale and all McAllister and all the people and you can see with Aston Villa there's a whole big team around him now obviously this is League One but like that's why I was quest- asked the question Shane about you know 10 years out of the game have things changed have players changed as Laura says are they a bit more too much in cotton wool now yeah. the scouting systems what are they like at Sunderland you know all those kind of like metrics that you need to have around you need to be in, like in detailed and in depth. Oh, it changed massively, John. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the question here is that I suppose though detractors of Roy would say that he was a bit outdated for the game the last time around, and that that's maybe where things fell down for him was that he wasn't moving with the modern game. And now we're fast forwarding how many years later. So those questions then get get amplified even more. But. I just think there would be tremendous value in, in finding the answers to those questions. Maybe he, he'd prove us all wrong. Not that I'm saying he definitely couldn't be a success, but I think there would be huge question marks if he came in. Conflated, 18-1 to 1 has won the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup at the Dublin Racing Festival, the Grade 1. So Gordon Elliott and Davy Russell had success with Galvin at Christmas in the Savills Chase. They've done it again with Conflated in that Irish Gold Cup, beating the Chatham Gold Cup winner of last year, Manila Indo, second at a price of 11-2, to 2, with Janet Deal third at 7-1. to 1. Asterian Forlange was fourth at 5-2 to favourite. Earlier in the day, a hat-trick for Willie Mullins. Blue Lord in the Arkle, Vauban in the Juvenile Hurdle, and also in the uh, novice hurdle of over two miles and six, Manella Cocooner at a price of 11 to 1. So that's the Dublin Racing Festival update. Ireland 17, Wales nil in the Six Nations. 49 minutes on the watch. Uh, tries for Bundy Aki and Andrew Conway. And the rest uh, kicked by Johnny Sexton and Ireland looking pretty good to get not only the win, but possibly a bonus point if they can finish it off over the next while. Listeners out there, 53106. Anything you want to say about Roy Keane or Frank Lampard or Obama Yang leaving or Man United losing last night? We'll be back with Graham Gartland, and Shane Keegan and Laro after this. Football on off the ball. With Sky. All the football you love in one place. Across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. Laro, Graham Gartland and Shane Keegan with us until five on Football Saturday here. Uh, the FA Cup scores. Chelsea 2, Plymouth 1. 
result after extra time. Kidderminster, who were leading West Ham 1-0, lost 2-1 in the end. Late goals, uh, first of all, Declan Rice scored in injury time, and then Jared Bowen scored at the end of extra time, so the Hammers threw to round five. Crystal Palace 2, Hartlepool 0 is the latest score. That is from Selhurst Park, with uh, Gwehi and Olise scoring for the Eagles. Everton 1, Brentford 0, the revolution's begun. On Merseyside, Frank Lampard, Yerry Mina with the goal. Uh, so that's uh, an interesting development at uh, the All Premier League Times looking through the team here Seamus Coleman is playing as a wing back today for, for Everton uh, we have also got scores from elsewhere Huddersfield 1 Barnsley nil. Man City 2 Fulham 1 so John Stones has scored the second goal for City they lead Fulham there now in the FA Cup fourth round Peterborough 1 QPR nil. it is Southampton nil. Coventry 1 so the Premier League side behind there uh, Stoke 1 Wigan nil. And Wolves nil, Norwich nil as they had a score. Does it matter, Laro, for United that they're out of the FA Cup? Yeah, of course it does. Of course it is, because it just it just turns the pressure upon them. And also the fact that they, they haven't really played a full 90 minutes well under uh, Ranić so far, which is which is very, very strange. And you know, when I say problems in in, in inverted commas, because the fourth in the Premier League, they, they've still got problems, and it and it's just like the I don't think they know that what the best team is. I don't think they know tactically as well, which which also helps to to provide the best team. And there's still a little bit of an, an enigma for me, John. So it certainly does not help. Um, be interesting to see what the Americans think of it, the owners. But I suppose from their point of view, as long as they're in the Champions League, uh, they probably don't really matter. Ronaldo's 37 today, Laro. I still feel he's not part of the solution there. Um, he scores all the goals. Obviously, he's a world-class player for forever, but is he just the wrong player at the wrong time? Well, where would they be without those goals, John? But yeah. I, I, I get you. I get you. And, um, you know, football's strange in many, many ways. I mean, he, does, he doesn't work that hard. He works that hard in the box in terms of getting the chances. But, you know... If you're in that team with him and he's scoring every week, actually, you don't bother because you just think if he keeps scoring and we've got to work a little bit harder as the other nine outfield players, you, you do it. But I don't know. I, I, it just sounds to me like the dressing room isn't right. And I'm not saying, you know, half are pulling one way and the other half are pulling another way. There's just something about that dressing room. And I thought somebody like... Harry Maguire, whatever you think about him as a player, I just thought he would have that dressing room, a bit like when Steve Bruce was there, he was brilliant in the dressing room, uh, along with one or two others, etc. Roy, Roy Keane would have been another one. They just don't seem to have that figure in there. And um, I suppose the other problem as well is, is quite possibly Ranyi goes in summer. At the moment, as far as we know, he's, he's, he's going to go in summer, so... I say they're just like they're in a void, aren't they? It's it's, it's just a really strange thing, and a, the way the well, they're not they're just not playing well. You might get half an hour, you might get one half, but they just can't put a full ninety minutes together. Is Lingard contradicting Rangnick during the week, Shane Keegan? Another example of the dressing room not being right, or is that just Lingard being upset because he didn't get his move? Ah, yeah, well, I think, look, Lingard is very much on the periphery of things there and he knows he's on the periphery. I'd say he's kind of, his thought process at the moment is I can't make the situation much worse for myself than it is, so I'm just going to say what I like mm-hmm. um, would be his his thinking, I think. But I, I agree very, very much with Laura. I, I think analysing what United are doing right or doing wrong on the pitch anymore is almost a pointless endeavour. I, I think the whole solution to fixing things at at Old Trafford is trying to fix the dressing room. Uh, I really, really do think so. I think the dynamic within that dressing room has to has to change, has to be got right before anything will correct itself on the pitch. They still have quality players. They have quality players who aren't performing very well, but they still have absolute quality players. Who are those? Um, I, I still think most of them, to be honest. Like, like you take somebody like Rashford, who obviously has been completely off the boil like, I think it takes something very, very small to click with Rashford. But it has a lot he... in the last couple of games with a couple of goals. Yeah, 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 he has. He's probably turned a little bit of a corner all right, so he has. Um, like, you know, you get people like McTominay, who, you know, at times people say not good enough to be a United player. I, I Again, I think he shows a lot. I think he's a very, very good player um, at times. I think all over the place. Like, Fernandez, you know, we've kind of he's he's kind of tipping along there at the moment, whereas he was the outstanding player in the Premier League last year for a huge, huge chunk of it. So there's a lot of players playing way below the level that they're capable of, and I think that's because of their 
demeanor and their their personality and, and the way that that dressing room is operating at the moment look I don't know how you fix it you know it's a good point Laura makes on on Harry Maguire like Graham you've you've probably been you've probably been in dressing rooms where you probably were the manager's go-to guy in terms of shape in the dressing room like I don't know I know it's a strange way to put it but like if you had a if you were a more high-profile player and you were now walking into that Manchester United dressing room um, as somebody who was a proven international and somebody that the manager wanted to grab the dressing room by the scruff of the neck, I mean, how how would you go about that now? As a player, you sort of take your lead off the manager and the manager sets the culture and sets the tone and then you, you just follow on them instructions a little bit, like, you know, punctuality, how you carry yourself, how you conduct yourself, how, how you train properly. All them things come into it. I don't think that I couldn't tell you the culture or the identity of Man United's team at the minute or their club. I couldn't tell you if they're going to play attacking uh, full press football like he said that they were going to do when he came in because he was he was um, he made his name off being a pressing coach. Like you said, you don't know what you're going to get from one week to the next. But as a as a player who's demanding standards all the time, you, you're following that off the sort of culture around the, the club. And if that culture isn't there, what are you referring to? What What's your reference point? Because I don't think they have one at the minute. And like the, the lad said, and Laurel touched on it as well, Like if he's not going to be there in the summer and you're going all in with, with his beliefs and then that changes... It's hard to have egg on your face as a player because you're going, well, I've, I've backed this guy and now another guy's come in and you have to go again. But I do think there's certain standards you should have as a professional footballer and there's certain standards you should have as a Man United player that you have to be willing to put in your best performance as you can every week because that, that that's what comes with the club. They've the fourth... I think they've four out of the top five highest-paid players in the Premier League. So there is a certain level of standard that you expect from that type but they're just not they're just not producing and it, and again they're only producing sporadically and it's hard to get a consistency with them because I, again I, I just don't know what their culture is or their identity and again it's hard for players to input that when it's not coming from the people above you because you, like I touched on you've no reference point No I think I think the other thing John they, they look like they're just playing for themselves Yeah You know that, that, they just that, they absolutely totally just look like it's like well what we're doing here, you know what? I'm just going. I'm just going to play for myself, with with the odd exception. And you know, people, when you talk to people about you know the dressing room being strong and this and all that kind of thing, and and, and the manager, the, the dressing rooms, many 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 things. And in a, in a in a really really good dressing room, players sort out the problems. And if if you're a, if you're cute as a manager and you know you've got a really strong dressing room, sometimes you let them to it. You, you let them. You let them get on with it. I remember um, when when I was at Newcastle with uh, with, with Kevin Kick and Terry McDermott and stuff, and we had Ginola, Ferdinand, Beardsley, Shearer, etc. And we were playing Arsenal at home, and uh, Ginola was playing on the left, and he was doing his usual thing, which was he didn't really want to go past the fullback because it was Lee Dixon, and he and he know he'd get clattered, so he kept. He kept coming inside, looking to cross it, shaping to cross it, but never crossing it. And Shearer and, and Les Ferdinand are, are, are making these runs right across the defenders and, and stuff like that. Anyway, so we were, we're about, we get to half time, we're one nil down. And uh, Kevin just said, hold on a minute, let's, let's give him five minutes because he'd spotted it straight away. So we waited outside the door for five minutes. And sure enough, when we got in, Shearer had Ginola up against the wall. It basically lifted him up with one hand and his, his feet weren't quite touching the floor, Ginola. And he, he just gave it to him. And he just said, if you do that again, he said, I will come over there and knock you straight out. I don't care if you think, you know, you're the best player in the world and you love yourself. I will knock you straight out. Do you know what? It worked. But question for you, Laura, on that, like, and, you, and obviously yeah. the managers you worked with, the yeah. players take the lead off that and they know, well, Keegan would have backed. Keegan probably would have backed Shearer then. He would have oh, went. No, I agree with you. And that's where it, that's where that comes from. Is that I knew the message my manager wanted, so I can then input that. And I know well, my manager's going to back me on this because yeah. we know the standards. Like Shearer yeah. knew the standards. The lads in Liverpool knew the standards. So when somebody yeah. spoke, they were speaking off the fact that 
I know I'm going to get backed by this because I know what's right because I've been here long enough. The likes of Hansen or Sunes is going, well, I've worked on the Paisley, exactly. this is what's expected. So yeah. when he, when they spoke, you knew, I'm not challenging that because the manager's going to back him on that. And they're yeah. the things we, that I think is lacking at Man United. Yeah, definitely. And we, we, we used to have this saying, 14 teas, one coffee. As in, it should be fifteen. It should be that uh, should be fifteen teas. So, and we had, you know, we had we had loads of. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I've told John this before, but um, the very first game I played for Liverpool was in Madrid against Atletico, and Liverpool had just won the European Cup against Real, and it was a it was a pre season friendly. And on the day before the game, we were training uh, over in Madrid. It, it was really really hot, to be fair. Um, we just had a little warm-up five-a-side, which is all we ever, ever, ever did, as everybody knows, but conditioned five-a-side. And um, I remember Alan Kennedy looking up to play a ball and Graeme Souness wanted it. And Graeme was like showing and showing and showing and showing. And uh, and Alan never played it to him. Graeme went over and chinned him, literally chinned him, <laughs> right? Floored him. Okay. And to be fair to Alan, he didn't get up and wisely probably didn't get up. And Joe Fagan went, what's wrong with you two? Oh, nothing, boss. Nothing, boss. And that was it. And they just got on with it. And it's just that's that's the way that it's got to be, you know. And that that's why when you have people like that in the team, I'm not saying you go around punching no. people, but everybody everybody was aware that you know it's we're all, we're all together. We're absolutely so. It's not 14 teas, one coffee. It's 15 teas and get on with it. Were you nervous, Laura, after that? But, but, <laughs> Were you no, nervous? Listen, Passing you it to Sunas every two minutes. Listen, 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 I'll tell you what, I've gave him more passes than he's ever had in his life. And, you're Graham, you're Graham, you can have it, don't worry about it. Do you know, uh, it, was, uh, did, did you know what he swore himself out then? Was he better after the second half? Or did he go into a shell? Did, did what? Alan did, Kennedy? Ginola, did Ginola go into a shell? Or did, oh no, did you know, oh, Ginola, oh my God, like, I, I, did he ever? I've, I've never seen him so good. And in the end, in the end... He was tackling Lee Dixon. Like, and, um, she, she, to be fair to Shearer, Shearer came in and uh, Shearer came in at the end of the game and, you know, it was all good. And, and I think he said I think he said something to Kevin, do you get a bonus for that half-time <laughs> team? <laughs> but John, that's, that, you see, like, that's why I love hearing, like, Laurel thrown out stories like that. Or that's why I, 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 I threw it at Graham is because, like, there's certain universal truths in football or in sport, like, and, and that's one of them. Like, the level I would have been managing at is 100 levels below the level Lauro played at. And yet everything he said there 100% applies. Like when the most successful period I had in football management when I was at Wexford, I had a, a, a captain and a vice captain in, in Graham Doyle and Aidan Keenan who they just, they just took care of that dressing room. They just sorted any problems. I never even heard about the yeah. problems. And sometimes they did it in a strong arm manner. Absolutely. And it's, it's just a universal truth that that's what you need. You need two, three leaders within your dressing room who's now look it can go real wrong if those two three leaders have the wrong mindset and wrong application but if those two three leaders are all about the team and all about what's best for the team and they come down like a ton of bricks on anybody who is not all about the team you have the easiest life in the world as a manager we've got a bonus yeah. point try for Ireland 29 against uh, Wales 29 nil now with uh, Gary Ringrose getting that fourth try what a start to the Six Nations for Ireland 63 minutes on the watch as Johnny Sexton puts on the jacket he's been uh, substituted an excellent performance from the Ireland captain and uh, we're going to be there for the uh, France game next week with a win under our belts 29 nil. and hopefully Johnny is okay got a bad knock in the uh, second half Johnny Sexton hopefully there'll be no uh, issues around concussion or anything like that but can it happen nowadays? You know this uh, the loose nature of what Lara was talking about then 40 years ago does that you know life Fight. has changed? Fights? Yeah Ah yeah he's still up and I only I retired probably six years ago but yeah you'd fight I've seen plenty yeah. of rails in dressing rooms but that's where they stay <laughs> on training grounds. That's the way it goes, like you know. Shane. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, we would have had a few tasty enough ones at, at at Galway in particular, so we would. But like you'd admire John, the you, most of the time anyway, you'd admire the capabilities of footballers to have a row and forget about it ten minutes later. You know, that, that's that's the good thing. Yeah. The certain like the, the the buzzword at the minute is non-negotiables. What's your non-negotiables for your football club? What 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 are we implementing as a team? Obviously, everybody took a lot of cues from the All Blacks a few years ago and and, and all them things. But there is certain non-negotiables that any team is successful. They, they generally tick all of them. You know, punctuality, how you carry yourself, how you, how you interact. No no social media. Like at, at the moment, you know, you aren't ticking any of them. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the, the classic example. 
Ronaldo going out in the press a few weeks ago talking about mentality of young players and then throwing a strop when he got taken off by Rangnick yeah. the following week. But then like Lingard putting that up on social media, go and speak to your manager. Like, why yeah. are you putting that out? And like, go and speak to your manager. You're playing for one of the biggest football clubs in the, in the world. Like, you don't and need the to Harry Maguire media. apologies, lads. Sorry, the Harry Maguire apo- the Harry yeah, Maguire apologies. Like all that well. stuff. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> you're like, you, you can't, you can't. Like, I just think that the players are sort of hiding behind social media a little bit and using it to come across like they care more. Just showing your performances. That's it. Like you don't need to do anything else. And I, I maybe, I don't know. You because you're sometimes even saying it, you feel like you're being a little bit old school or archaic here. But th- there's certain things that you just go. There's a lot of things I changed from when I played and coached. That now with a different mindset, I'd be like, do you know what? I I dispense of all that and just be concentrated on what's in front of you. And I think they just need to concentrate on playing, go away from money, all the the sort of fuss all around it, and just get back to winning football matches. Yeah. John, yeah. That, I mean, a lot of players now, their agents, their agents manage all yeah. the, everything they put up there and out there. I mean, it's ridiculous. And the, and the players pay them. And it, it, there's lots and lots of players doing it. Companies, speaking yeah. To someone, yeah, speaking to someone at the PFA, and they said it's like, it's rife. I mean, what, why on earth would you let somebody else do that? It's just nuts, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you should have sold Lingard. You should have sold him yeah. last year when his value was high. They're gonna lose yeah, him West for nothing. They're gonna lose him for yeah. After the West Ham loan, he, he kicked in his extension in the summer. He should have sold. He should have sold him when his value was at its highest. They're gonna lose him for well, nothing in the summer. Now they're looking. Re- they're trying to ransom Newcastle into taking him on a loan deal, yeah. and yeah. and basically incentivising it that if they stay up, they pay X amount because they know they've lost. They're gonna lose a lot of money on this on on losing Lingard in the summer for nothing they should have sold him last year when his value was at his highest sorry Laurel yeah no it's all right no the the other thing is as well of course he was at West Ham yeah and uh and I remember saying to Molly he said God how 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 well has he done for you and he said brilliantly he said but he said he came to us with a little bit of a reputation as a bit of a boy like tonight out Mm -hmm. and all those kind of things and he said the best thing that happened to to us and him was lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't go anywhere. And Moses said he was staying back and doing extra training and everything. And and he said, in in a real world, he said, I don't think he would have been doing too much extra training. So that I mean that that was an absolute win. When I mean West Ham tried to take him again this time, but um United, what 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 are they finding of? He's not playing. Just let, get some money and let him go. Yeah. yeah. We got Laura here, Graham Gartland, uh, the former League of Ireland and FAI Cup winner with Drahada. And Shane Keegan, the UEFA Pro Licence Coach in Football Saturday. You want to get a text in there, 53106. Uh, you want to say something there, Graham? No, no, no. no, no, no. Uh, the rugby's going well. Uh, 29 points to nil. <laughs> I'm trying to look. The, it's on the screen here, so I'm looking down there and I'm yeah, looking yeah, over at yeah, you. Yeah, and, yeah, and then yeah. I'm, I'm looking, looking up at the lads up. on the screen up here. I'm all over the place. We're, we're looking at me phone just, here, I'm JD. Just so. it, John. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 so. not, we're, we're not just on News Talk, folks. We're also on the Off the Ball digital and social channels. If you don't know that yet, you can also watch us, um, our ugly mugs, on uh, Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube. So uh, 29 yeah, nil. Off not knowing. Yeah, yeah, 29 nil for Ireland against uh, Wales. Bonus points secured, four tries. Andrew Conway with two, Bundy Aki with one, Gary Ringrose with one, Johnny Sexton has uh, now gone off the pitch and uh, Joey Carberry kicking the ball into the corner there. So, a very impressive start for Ireland in the Six Nations. In the FA Cup, the magic or the tragic of the Cup, uh, we we got Chelsea, two Plymouth, one full-time, Kidderminster, one West Ham, two full-time half-times, Crystal Palace, two, Hartlepool, nil. Everton won, Brentford nil at half time. Yerry Mina with the goal for the Toffees. Huddersfield won, Barnsley nil is the latest. It is Manchester City two, Fulham one at half time. John Stones and Ilkay Gundawan for City. Peterborough won, QPR nil. Southampton nil, Coventry won. That could be a turn up for the books at St Mary's. Stoke won, Wigan nil. And Wolves nil, Norwich City won in the FA Cup fourth round. Cambridge against Luton kicks off at half five. Tottenham against Brighton at 8 o'clock this evening. Dundee won, Ross County won in the Scottish Premiership. Hibernian nil, St Mirren nil. Livingston won, Aberdeen nil. And St Johnston nil, Dundee United nil. These are the latest scores. Also the Premier League tonight, Burnley against Watford, 6 o'clock start. Dublin Racing Festival, conflated 18-1 winner of the big one, the Gold Cup. 
That's a bit of a shock. Davy Russell in the saddle for Gordon Elliott, the trainer there earlier on. Manella Kakuner won the two mile six furlong novices hurdle at a price of eleven to one for Willie Mullins. Willie Mullins also success in the juvenile hurdle with Vauban at nine to four and with Blue Lord in the Arkle Chase at 5-2. to two. So that's what's been going on at the Dublin Race Festival at Leopardstown. Get your text into us, 53106. We'll be speaking about Arsenal, Everton, Liverpool and also plenty of other things with Laro, Graham Gartland and Shane Keegan after the news. And off the ball here on News Talk. Do not go away. In the FA Cup fourth round, let you know the latest scores here now. Uh, we have uh, Chelsea beating Plymouth 2-1. Kidderminster 1, West Ham 2, a full time. Crystal Palace 2, Hartlepool nil as latest, also latest scores. Everton 1, Brentford nil. Huddersfield 1, Barnsley nil. Man City 2, Fulham 1. Peterborough 1, QPR nil. Southampton nil. Coventry 1, Stoke 1, Wigan nil. And Wolves nil, Norwich 1. W- w- Norwich have scored in the last few minutes with uh, Kenny McLean on the mark there for the Canaries. That is at Molyneux in the FA Cup. Adam Eda starting. Uh, up front uh, for Norwich which is great to see it's always great to see Adam Eda in the team because it seems like Dean Smith likes him at the moment also just let you know our coverage on Off the Ball brought to you by Sky all the football you love in one place across Sky Sports BT Sport and Premier Sports we're joined by Laro the former League and European Cup winner with Liverpool and Republic of Ireland defender the UEFA Pro Licence coach Shane Keegan and also the FAI Cup and League of Ireland winner with uh, Darada Graham Gartland to talk about the beautiful game just a text in here in 53106 for Laro John, a question for Laro. If you're picking a combined Liverpool and United team at the moment, who from United gets in the team? You're asking me? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. Well, yeah. That's, a, that's not a surprise, <laughs> yeah. is it? Well, it's not a surprise that I said no, but I, um, I don't Who would you take? In the De Gea, maybe? No? No? Yeah, uh, Allison. I'm, no. Trying, I'm trying to think of a United player that's playing well at the moment and he's the only one I can think of who's playing well. Yeah, you don't, for, don't forget Allison's a goal scorer, John. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Allison's one of the best keepers in the world. So. Yeah, De Gea has to play well, though. To yeah. Keep yeah. him United yeah, in games. Yeah. Anybody Absolutely. in the United team again, the Liverpool team, Shane? No, I think an on-form Bruno Fernandes, maybe. Um, but I don't know if his current form will even prove it. Just you were going through results there, JD, just to throw one other one at you there that's after catching my eye. So, soon to be Roy Keane Sunderland nil bottom of the table Doncaster Rovers two yeah so on that Roy Keane Sunderland Stephen Jarrods Aston Villa and uh, Frank Lampard's Everton it's amazing how they get Patrick these Pierre, Crystal's Palace yeah Graeme Gartland's uh, uh, Shane Keegan's yeah <laughs> uh, what's the reaction on Merseyside to Frank Lampard Laro good good um it can be a strange bunch of Evertonians, which obviously we saw with the appointment of Benitez and rightly so in many ways. But no, I think it's uh, it's been good. I think the, um, was it the Portuguese guy, the guy who came over, was it Pereira? Yeah, yeah, who went on Sky Sports News and, and talked yeah. about his job interview, which is very strange. And there was yeah. graffiti, there was graffiti, Pereira out, Lampard in. Like for, oh, yeah. graffiti for Frank Lampard on Merseyside, that is strange. Yeah, I know. They weren't having Pereira, absolutely weren't having him whatsoever. And I know sometimes it's just a, a small minority, but I think it was the majority of supporters were going, no, 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 let's let's get somebody somebody who knows the league. And, and, and I think I think it's a good appointment with Frank Lampard. I think the signing then of, uh, of obviously, who did he sign? Ali and Van der Beek. Van der Beek on Yeah, I think, you know, I think he'll get them playing. I think he's a kind of player that will... Put his arm, kind of manager will put his arm around players. I just saw a little bit of a thing when he when he met Deli Ali and it was all all good, looked great and everything. I think he'll get him playing and he, he is a player. I think he's one of those who needs to be loved. But also I think I think he's one of those who's better out of London. Um if you understand what that means. And and up it, up north it's a bit it's a bit difficult. You're in a goldfish bowl, so that'd be good. Van der Beek as well. He just needs to play. Um, I think Everton's problems basically are, are at the back. They've been they've been awful all season. But interesting to say, you said uh, Seamus Coleman was playing wing back today, John. Yeah, yeah. So he's obviously gone with he's going with the three or the five, whichever you want to call it. So I think straight away he's been looking at the DVDs or whatever and decided that the, that they're awful at the back, which they are. Well, he's gone and, with um, Godfrey Keane and Holgate as a three with um, Mikalenko okay. and Coleman as wing backs with Allen and Gomez in the middle. Yeah, well, he's got, so he's got, you know, um, he's got legs in there. And, you know, and t- the two of the three centre-backs, the wide centre-backs, are the, the quick, aren't they? Keane, Keane wouldn't be the quickest. But the other the other two are quick. So that, if you make a mistake in that position, but you've got 
pace to spare you can recover so that would be sensible I think he'll, I think he'll get them playing and listen it, where they are in the league what are they sixth bottom seventh bottom or something they're much better than that um, Calvert, Calvert-Lewin and uh, Richarlison um, they've got some good players they've and Richarlison has just scored 2-0 there you go right on cue <laughs> um, the only problem with him is I think from what what I'm told by one of the lads that I know who works at Everton, that they they're ready for the kind of Richarlison at the end of the season. I want to go, but um, maybe with Frank Lampard, he, he might. He's just talented. Stay there. He's a talented player, Richarlison. He just needs to keep kept happy because uh, he can be a bit of a moody individual. I remember seeing that was he got annoyed that he didn't take a penalty earlier in the season at Brighton. Hmm. Uh, but that goal he scored. That, yeah, yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, but, but you if you get it, if you get the best out of him, he, like he's he's got like a lot of talent. That player. Oh, he's a proper, he's a proper player, and he's strong. He's, he's strong as an ox as well. And his his partnership with Calvert Lewin is is really, really, really good. So now they they're much better than the position that they're in at the moment. I don't buy this Ali Van der Beek thing at all. I, I, they were they were saying on the back pages this week that it was a coup. Like Ali to me is a busted flush as a player. And maybe like hopefully I'm wrong for his sake. And Van der Beek, whew, like I, I I don't really see the the positives or the benefit of this uh, for. Do you know? That's no, interesting. No, I, don't, I don't see it. I, I think Ali, like, look at the stats the last few seasons. He's like, it hasn't been a one season thing. This is like, Ali hasn't played like well for Spurs probably since 2017. Shane, but I think. I, is this sorry, just a sports did, thing from just, your end? Or do you just. I just think, I just, I, this, this kind of uh, narrative that Lampard has had a coup to sign two players that weren't deemed good enough to play first team football for their clubs is a bit of a misnomer for me. Yeah, they're both yeah, international he's, footballers he's, as well, though. Sorry, Shane, go on. Yeah. He's, he has been, he's been awful for us, John, and they're, like they're, they're, it's impossible for our uh, our comments not to be coloured by how poorly how poor he has been for Spurs. That's for sure. Um, you know, like yourself, I'm sure I'm in a few WhatsApp groups, and just any time he's he's on the field, he gets dogs abuse in the WhatsApp group. So he does. He he had a decent performance there a while ago against Chelsea. I thought it might reignite him a little bit, but he just reverted back to type very very quickly. He doesn't help himself either with his body language, does he? He looks mopey and kind of sulky and that, but. He, he, I don't know, he is the sort of fellow, I think, you know, if he feels the love and, and arm around the shoulder, new manager, all that kind of thing, I, I, I wouldn't rule out him reigniting, John. Yeah, I hope, I hope for his John, sake. John, yeah. I, think, I think getting him out of London is a, is yeah, a masterstroke. Yeah, yeah, well. Change the scenery for him. Um, Ireland have won, by the way, 29-7 against Wales. We'll hear from Andy Dunn on that shortly. Um, what will Lampard have learned, Laro? Then you think from Chelsea? Look, it, it went south from in the end, but what would he th- maybe take from that as an experience? Um, I think I think he'll take lots of it from it from experience. But he's he's certainly you know he's shown he's been able to deal with sort of big time players, etc. He just it was a job too early for him to be honest with you. He, he did really really well with Derby. Um, you know the lone players he brought in, etc., and the style of football was good, etc. But it's it was just too early, um, and you've got to have loads and loads of experience to to deal with experience with top players, and he hadn't. And I, and I think it, it'll have learned loads and loads and loads of stuff. But um, I think this is a really good job for him. I think I don't think he could really have got a better one. In, in, in all honesty, but at any big club, it's dealing with the players who aren't in the team. That's that's it, you know. And you know the stories come out of dressing rooms, and where do they come from? The guys who aren't playing. It's it's never apart from Man United, maybe it's never it's never the guys who are in the team. It's the guys who aren't playing, and I think he probably found that difficult to deal with. Listen, he's a really he's a super intelligent boy, you know, uh, Frank Lampard. And and he really gets it. I, I think he'll do well at Everton. And, and they've got well, they've already backed him, but they're, they're really seriously going to back him. Well, they'd want to be better in the transfer market than they have been the last few seasons. Some of the the deals oh. they've done have been absolutely appalling, and the, the wages God. they're on, and like the the money, like the the whole system at Everton from a from a the way the club has been run has been a mess. Well, but it, you know, it's the owner. It's purely and simply. The owner and and I know I know at one stage um, when he was who was the Dutch manager that they had for Kuhlman. a while. Kuman, Ronald Kuman. Kuman, yeah. Yeah, was it Kuman? Yeah. Listen, they were they were three 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 backroom, not so much backroom staff, but maybe it was certainly the, certainly the owner. He was he was saying we should have these players, 
um, the main recruiter was saying we should have these players and someone else who was around there, uh, the laddie Walsh, was it, who'd been there for a while, I think. Yeah, Steve think Walsh, he might yeah. be, they were, They're all going for different players. They're all falling out. You, it's like, whoa. Do you know, and, and Mashiri would just be, yeah, let's go and get him. I've heard about them. I mean, what he, what he paid for... Um, Two of the Arsenal players he took, and you just said about the wages, John. The wages they were on, and they uh, it will be. You wouldn't believe what money he's on. And this lad who went back to Southampton that never really understood. Theo Walcott. The Theo Walcott on his day, you think, wow. But he never, ever, ever got football. He just he was a purely he just reacted when the ball. Yeah, he reacted when the ball came to him. The money he was on to go to Arsenal was just nuts. And of course, then you know, in the dressing room. And you look at these players you brought in, and at best they're average. It causes a problem because you're thinking, "Hold on a minute, yeah. I, you know he's getting three times more money than me." No, no, none of the, but none, none of this is the player's fault. This is the thing. Well, you no. no, nobody turned it down. No. Any no, contract? Well, no, no, nobody turned down the terms of contract. If you are well, that's the contract. That's the length of it. That's the. Uh, the, the money it's, it's, the it's, the, it's the people who run the club and like why yeah. would it be any different for a Frank Lampard than it was for Ancelotti or Allardyce or Koeman or Benitez or Martinez or anybody else yeah. there's no plan yeah. there's no plan no well no but, so, but, you know, but there are, you know there's no recruitment plan there's no let's bring these in let's build a, let's okay. sign yeah. young hungry players who are 23, 24 let's have a wage structure that the 23 to 20, 28 year olds are going to fall into this bracket the ones who are more experienced the 28, 29 who have been successful fall into that bracket there's no plan yeah. in the recruitment to say well where yeah. do we need to, to go just got to break away well, for a full time sorry lads for Ireland have beaten Wales in the Six Nations let's get a wrap of what happened at Lansdowne Road from Andy Dunn a convincing uh, 29-7 final score uh, Ireland well on top in terms of possession and territory for the whole game scored four tries three were converted and one penalty from Sexton and all four tries came from members of the back line Bundy Aki scored after three minutes in the first half Andrew Conway scored after three minutes of the second half the first of a brace for Conway his first being a superb finish his second to walk in and finally an electric uh, outside break from Gary Ringroads with about 15 minutes to go finished Ireland's try scoring um, very much on top for the last 15 minutes in Wales took an opportunistic intercept with about four minutes to go it was really one of the only chances they had all game showed Ireland's uh, strength in defence on both sides of the ball uh, excellent in defence excellent in attack uh, and under strength Welsh side possibly underwhelming in terms of their overall performance but weren't allowed to play by a very very strong and impressive first Irish outing Thanks so much Andy for everything today great stuff Ireland uh, beating Wales 29-7 in the Six Nations off to Paris we go Allez les Verts and it's Scotland against uh, England at 4.45 in the Calcutta Cup match at Murrayfield. Just go through some FA Cup scores. Everton 2, Brentford 1 now. Brentford to pull one back at Goodison Park. Uh, Man City 3, Fulham 1. So City have added another there at the Etihad Stadium in the fourth round of the FA Cup. And it has come from Riyad Mahrez from the penalty spot. And also any other scores. No, they're all the same. Norwich still 1-0 up at Wolves. Uh, you want to finish off there on Laro on uh, Frank no, Albert? Well, just, just, just with Mishiri, what 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 of course, is a worry is that he's basically funding the new stadium. So, you know, they're, they're, they're in a situation where nobody wants to upset him because if he decides, you know what, stuff you lot, I'm off, there's there's no new stadium or there is and they'll be in a massive, massive debt. Yeah, well, he's put 500 million into the club. So, look, to be fair to Mad, him. Mad, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, it's like it's some commitment and he's, he's actually just released another 100 million. So, look, you can't say that he hasn't put his money where his mouth is, but like just whether he maybe just should just get out of the situation. But John, look at look at what like Liverpool done, and look on Man City would be a better example. Before they got Guardiola, the, a year out, they, they put all these people in place. So when Guardiola took the club, they, all the structures were there. So then all of a sudden, he, their recruitment team kicks in. Everybody's ready to go. They have their new, they, obviously they have a new stadium, the training ground gets redone. All these things are put in place so Guardiola can just go and manage. They're not able to do that at Everton. Ancelotti's not able to do that at Everton because he ha Benitez comes in and clears out everybody. So again, yeah. you're going. It's just it's it's all well and good pumping money into the club, but there has to be a plan behind it. There, there and there has to be accountability behind the money going in. Where's that money gone? Why 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 have we made money back? Why are we selling players cheaper than what we brought them in as? And that's where if I'm pumping that amount of money in, I'd I'd want to be asking questions of where's it gone and why have we squandered it? That would be my. 
Yeah. The, the other thing, if I just put in as well, the problem as well is exacerbated because look across the park, yeah. the, their recruitment's been brilliant. And, you know, apart from Alison and, and, and Van Dyke, generally players in the 30 to 40 million bracket who wouldn't be top, top players when they arrive, but, you know, they've looked at them, the recruitment team looked and thought, all these guys can train on. I mean, when you look at club, look at his recruitment, apart from the, the goalkeeper who now I don't even know where he is, the German boy, I mean, every, virtually every single player he's taken, he would now get more money for, and he's made them all into top, top players. Um, it was uh, Sariano and Bagiristain, wasn't it, who joined uh, Man City um, yeah. Yeah. With, with, with Guardiola. Just on Liverpool there, Laro, uh, Luis Diaz, uh, what's the, 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 the temperature in, in, in Anfield around his signing? Uh, I think I think it's high because you know I'm, just what I said. People are like are, like the Marnes of this of this world, which was signed, and everyone went, "Oh, we're not quite sure about him and everything." But he, he looks a proper player. But I think I was laughing yesterday because I saw this uh, saw this picture of him and Klopp, and it was in Klopp's office, and um, he's probably he's probably already had his first bollocking as well, a new player, because he turned up in an Adidas tracksuit. And it was Adidas written all over it, so the sponsors will not be happy. But, They're a new balance, I think. Um, it's a new balance, Nike. Nike is it? Massive Nike deal, yeah. Sorry. Nike. I'm, I'm, out, I'm, yeah. Out of, I'm out of the loop on my gear. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. You're not alone. And, and you know, the, 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 thing, the thing is, I, I, saw him, I went to the two Porto games, and he, he, I thought, certainly after the second one at Anfield, he caused them loads of problems, and I didn't really know who this guy was. But um, competition for places, he plays on the left, but he's generally right-footed. He's a little bit... If you watch a lot of his goals, it's a bit Coutinho-like. You know, cut in from the left, bend it in the top corner, all that kind of stuff. I think he'll only get better at Anfield. And as I said, and it raises the competition for places because if you really look at the, the front three generally, Liverpool have been so, so lucky that, that none of those front three have really been out for a long time. And when you consider the way that Liverpool play, it's it, it's amazing. It either says a lot for them or the backroom staff or, or whatever, because normally when you play like that with that pressing thing, you know, you'd think at some stage you'd have an injury which would keep you out for two or three months, but it just doesn't seem to happen with them. Mane and Salah, of course, tomorrow in the Cup of Nations in Africa with Senegal against Egypt. Uh, is, yeah, well, there's one for you. The, the, you, you watch this, that whoever wins it, well, is, is being allowed to go back to their own country by Liverpool to obviously show off the, the trophy and that. But they probably won't be playing on Thursday against Leicester City. Right. OK. Interesting stuff. How long is Klopp going to be there for, Lara, do you think? Uh, as long as he wants. Yeah. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if he just one day went into the office and said, you know what, it's been an absolute blast, but, uh, but I've had enough. And I would hope, you know, with, with the Americans, with uh, FSG, that you would hope that they've been looking already in terms of who who, who they would bring in. And he'll never he'll never go and manage Germany because he likes that day to day uh, interaction with all with all these players. But he's the type of bloke who would go, you know what? I've done this. Uh, it's been brilliant, but but I'm but I'm off. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, it'll be a hard man to replace. You will be like who? Very. Well, yeah. We'll see how Jared gets on the next few years if it's, if it's <laughs> two to three years. Um, yeah. We talked about Lampard there being too soon for him. 5 3 106 after Spurs bought Sun. They changed formation and Delhi Ali form dropped off. Uh, Shane Keegan, were Arsenal right to offload Aubameyang? Yeah, 100%, John. Yeah, look, it got yeah. very messy the manner in which it happened. Um, but look, it's, it has to be the manager's call. If the manager feels that he's not good for for team morale, or he's not, you know, putting in a shift, or or, or living up to the, I know, you know, Graham was talking about non-negotiables and standards earlier. If he's fallen short of those, as and he was the captain at the time, well then get get him out of place. Um, and to be fair to Arteta. That's been further vindicated in the fact that, you know, I know it's trickled off a little bit lately, but they went on such a really good for, run of form just after he kind of booted him out of the side. So that looks fantastic for Arteta. That really, really does. That that kind of, you know, cements that it was a, it was the right decision for him to make. And look, I don't think Aubameyang's covered himself in glory in, in the whole thing between how he carried on and then how he... Uh, how he seems to have gone kind of a couple of steps ahead in terms of making all this deal happen. Look, I suppose to be fair to him, you can argue that he's, he's, he's taking a pay cut. You know, that's probably a good sign to a certain extent that he wants to get back playing. But he, like he never struck me as 
the sort of player that you could rely on within a team. You know, he has ability. There's no doubt he has ability. But I uh, like captainship, captaincy material, and and a, a go-to guy when times are tough. Nah, he would he wouldn't have been that for me. And look, I don't think I don't think Arsenal will struggle without him. They've got such fantastic array of young talent coming through. They really really do at the moment. Um, and to be fair to Lacazette, he has stepped up uh, since Aubameyang yeah. has. Has, has stepped out of it. He really, really has. I, I, that surprised me, to be honest with you. That was the one that surprised me now. Um, but he's been playing so, so well, almost as a kind of a... He's kind of double jobbing as a 9 and a 10 at the same time. He, he's doing really, really well dropping off into little areas and then still getting himself back in around the box. I know he's not scoring a huge amount, but um, if he can keep going well for the rest of the season, backed up by all that that talent around him, I really like Odegaard. Saka obviously looks a fantastic player. Um, look, I think Arsenal are, are, are better off without him, I mean. Uh, three one at Everton. All right, John. I just one one line about that Obama Yang. Yeah. Why did why why didn't Jurgen Klopp take him when he'd had him? Uh, Tuchel didn't. Tuchel said the same as well. He said that he was he was late yeah. all the time. Yeah. We were talking. It's funny that the conversation we had this morning or earlier about Man United and about like having. Play, senior players in your dressing room that run run the dressing room and and instill and instill that culture that a manager brings and then he's your captain and he's the one that's constantly like how does he then pull somebody and say listen <clears throat> get your finger out this is what we're this that's not acceptable at Arsenal you can't like because you lose all all credibility the non-negotiables you're, as you're talking yeah, about yeah you're, you lose yeah. all credibility yeah. like so yeah. and that's the bit like and there's a bit of accountability on a bang yang he, he was flying yeah he captained them to the FA Cup he signed a massive contract and then. It was like just a lack of care and effort. Just, just, just mirrored Ozil for me. Yeah, exactly the same exactly. thing. as so got Ozil now. Obama Yang himself claims that Arteta forced him out, but when you look at the body of evidence, no. 22 goals in yeah. the previous season to what he did subsubsequently after yeah. signing the contract. John, and, yeah. you have to look John Arteta made him captain. I, yeah. I think he made him captain because I think it was the last throw of the dice. Yeah, yeah. He gave him every chance. He gave him every chance, yeah. 3-1 yeah. 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 Everton lead now. Mason Holgate has scored uh, at Goodison Park against Brentford in oh, the Cup. Oh, the revival is on. Well, uh, Frank Lambert has Everton. <laughs> Uh, Crystal Palace 2, <laughs> Hartlepool 0, uh, Huddersfield 1, Barnsley 0, Man City 4 now, Fulham 1. So Man City going for the um, quadruple, quintuple and uh, multiple. Uh, Riyad Mahrez with another goal um, from a Kevin De Bruyne assist. Uh, we have Peterborough 1, QPR 0, Southampton 1, Coventry 1. So the Saints have equalised there at St Mary's and the goal coming from uh, Stuart Armstrong. Uh, Jamie McGrath playing for Wigan but they're 2-0 down away to Stoke and it is Wolves 0, Norwich 1 still in the FA Cup fourth round and Ireland had beaten Wales 29-7 in the Six Nations at Lansdowne Road and got the bonus point in the process. I wanted lads to jump into the TV the other night when I was watching Celtic Rangers and you were a former sure. um, man of Scotland. <laughs> Graham, a Graham, man of Scotland. Graham Gartland. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was great. That was just why we why we live and why we want football fans back in stadiums. The evening kickoffs for the an old firm derby. I, I I don't think there's been one since 2011, um, because of oh. all the stuff that goes on around it. But you can see what it creates. Then the atmosphere at Celtic Park is unbelievable. I've, I've been lucky enough to be in a, probably four or five old firms. Um, some of them are a lot of them are morning kickoffs rather than evening ones because uh, w- 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 everything that goes on with them. But um, Unbelievable atmosphere, unbelievable start to the game from Celtic as well, and it just added to it. Um, even the light show they put on, I wouldn't be a big fan of it during the day, but because it doesn't really work. But again, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, they done a little green light on the on the huddle, and it just added to it. You would have liked. I don't think they had fans. Rangers weren't allowed fans in the stadium. No, no, they weren't. And that no. probably is the only disappointment that it's better. It is better when this thing fans. The old firms. The atmosphere is unbelievable, but it's not one of those where you go to where there's singing and because it just doesn't nothing gets a chance to build because they absolutely go like any decision throw ins the, the, you'd be in, the crowd would be in the middle of singing a little song and then the, the throw in go against you and it's just uproar it's just it's nothing it's just there's a, just a constant buzz that just sits in the ground. For, and I'm at both stadiums, I've been to all firms at both grounds, and it just sits there and it's just constant. It's it, they're they're probably for me is the best atmosphere in a game I've ever been at. There you go. That's some statement from Graham Gartland. Laura, the best atmosphere in a game you've ever been at? Um, of course, it's certainly certainly up there. But um, Merseyside derbies when when Everton were were a really really good side as well with were, were, were tops. But yeah, I mean I watched it and was glued to it, and it was. And it was just 
fabulous and it just really seriously is and and how, how you must feel as a player certainly the other night Celtic player with no Rangers fans in anyway they were they were just their performance was like unlike anything they, they'd put together all the season it was brilliant Ange knows what he's doing, doesn't he, uh, Shane Keegan? Nine of the 11 players who started had been signed by Ange, including Hatate, who seems to be the, the kid in the block there at the moment. He does, yeah, and he's 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 casting net wide in terms of where he's bringing the talent from. He really, really is. Um, look, they were they were fantastic the other night. I'd, I'd, I'd echo Graham's um, thoughts. I think I, I, might, <laughs> I might have showed you when I was sitting in the studio there at one stage that I have a Celtic crest on my arm from my young and youthful days. Uh, so, <laughs> is, that a, so, is that a tattoo, Shane? Yeah, yeah, oh, no. yeah. It you, is did, you, never, you, never, you never decided to get removed, right? No, 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 no absolutely not. Look, I, I would, like like everything, you struggle to keep as up with it when you get a bit older as you did back when you were younger. I mean, in my, my early 20s, my teen, late teens, um, I would have been absolutely Celtic crazy. Um, it was the first stadium I was ever in outside of Ireland, um, so I was just remember be, uh, absolutely incredible walking into the place and 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 the crowd in there. Um, I was in it in the only thing better than beating Rangers three 0 is beating Rangers with a, a last minute goal, and I was in it in two thousand and eight when Van Gore of Hesselink, Yang Van Gore of Hesselink scored. Uh, Rangers only Rangers were miles ahead in the Great game. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They only needed a draw to keep the distance and uh, he got a last-minute winner and, and Celtic ended up clawing the gap back and, and winning the title that year. It, it's just an incredible, incredible atmosphere. But I, I must admit, yeah, over the last few years, I haven't had my eye on it as much. And then, like you say, you're starting to... just seems to be a real good buzz around the place at the moment. And I had started to get sucked back in over, over recent weeks. Um, so to see them produce what they produced on Wednesday night now has me already looking at... at Flights and tickets and the whole lot and trying to figure out how soon uh, I can get my young Back on the bandwagon, Shane. Back on the bandwagon. Well, that's the also the consequence of being a Tottenham Hotspur supporter. Uh, <laughs> Shane, so, um, the course of it. Yeah. Um, Laura, you don't have any tattoos of Liverpool liver birds or anything on your arms right now? European Correct, club. John. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't have any football related tattoos, Graham. Stop. No. Folks out there, listeners out there, 53106 listeners, if any football related to twos, maybe that like Shane Keegan, like the big Celtic uh, crest on, you, on your arm. Um, <laughs> it's hard though, isn't it, Shane, to just, uh, maybe Graham, I don't, maybe I, I might ask you this, it's then back to the normality of Scottish football, which is just a bit of shrug of the shoulders outside of the big ones, you know? Yeah, and I, I think, you, yeah, this was a league of the eighties. That was had Dundee United in a UEFA Cup final and yeah. in a European Cup semi final. Aberdeen, Aberdeen, Aberdeen winning Aberdeen. league titles under Alex Ferguson in a Cup Winners Cup, beating Real Madrid in a Cup Winners Cup. You, John, do, do, Celtic do you know struggled. What's been a help? Do you know it's been a help in terms of of revitalising the interest? For well, I can only speak from my perspective. The amount of the amount of Irish players over there, don't the amount of Ross Tierney scoring from, from Motherwell the other night. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny ah, Johnny, sure, Johnny Hayes. Amounts. At St Mirren as well, you yeah. know, you had a huge amount. That was kind of initially what started me looking at results again Connor and sucking Rowan. me back in. So it was, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's it just became such a basically a monopoly that the the finances of the old firm took over, and it was it's. I don't think anyone's broke that since I think Ferguson's Aberdeen was the last one to break, or it might be in 1983. Dundee United was the last team outside the old firm to win the league. So I think it's, Aberdeen, yeah. I think in '86, I think was it. So yeah, they, they were the, the, only, the two I can think of. Dundee United in '83 and Aberdeen, the, the only ones to break the monopoly of the Celtic and Rangers. So in that sense, it becomes a little bit, um, I wouldn't say uninteresting, but it's it's, it's the same. And Bar, what is it? Barcelona, Real Madrid win the win the league over there. Borussia Dortmund win the league in Germany. But from an Irish point of view, obviously Celtic's the interest. And when they were winning the nine in a row, everybody sort of expects them to win it. Then Rangers go and stop ten in a row, and then obviously it's on then to try and win it back. And the interest uh, comes up. But considering what Celtic lost last year, the players they lost, they lost Oyer, Duffy, Christie, Edward, uh, Scott Brown went to Aberdeen. So the recruitment they've had in the summer to then go and basically beat Rangers who I think went unbeaten in the league is is fantastic so um, it's really good achievement from them and I think with Rangers obviously bringing Ramsey in if they get Morales back they're obviously going to be a better outfit so it should be a good title race Liam Scales must be feeling pretty good watching that through the night John Kenny as well 
that's yeah. gone over as well. So he, he, yeah, I, th- I think Liam's probably only disappointment was he didn't get a, he didn't get a chance to go on and play. But yeah, they've recruited well. Uh, they, I think they've lost their main recruitment under Lennon, which was Nick Hammond. He left the club, um, so a lot of them have been doing it where Dermot Desmond's been involved and his son and stuff and that. So they've been involved in the recruitment heavily, and uh, it does make for an interesting tight race because I don't th- I think they won the game Celtic, but I don't think Rangers are over. I think they'll I think they'll uh, come back and like you said, Morelles and Ramsey's going to come in and, and play for them as well so it'll be an interesting one Fasal Vega the 11th eight on favourites winning the final race of the Dublin Racing Festival the bumper there by 12 lengths so uh, I think he might be Chapman bound uh, related to Cue Vega uh, so conflated was the 18 to 1 winner of the Gold Cup earlier on Shane uh, Keegan the best atmosphere you've been at at the football match either involved um, at or as a spectator yeah, no, I, I would have to say the Celtic ones, really, to be honest with you. A couple of brilliant European nights when I was back mad into it as well. I remember a, a, a late equaliser, or sorry, a late winner, I think it was, against AC Milan. Could have been Nakamura, I think, somebody like that. Um, just the incredible atmosphere over there. Uh, you know, it's a whole, you know, it's an experience more so than a soccer match, that's for sure, If you, if, when, you, when you head across and just the whole... Uh, and the whole Irishness of it all. I know that'll rub people up, some, some people up the wrong way, but it's it's hard to describe. Well, they were singing the, the National Anthem. They sing the na- I was hearing the National Anthem through the TV the yeah. other night. Ah, look, it's, it's, the, it's the whole thing. <laughs> when you do the... Uh, well, at least they have you, it, like, you know, because I watched the Late Late Show there about 10 days ago and they, they didn't have the National Anthem on. Anyway, sorry, that's yeah. just my humour. Go on, Shane. When you, do the whole, when you do the whole day trip and you, you head across in the boat and you're having your few points from early, I saw Kevin Cassidy actually... Tweeting, uh, tweeting clips from his whole day long. The the build up to it on the Wednesday, um, you're you know you're into the brazen head for the sing song and the points and the whole lot. It's the whole thing that goes with the experience to to one of the big Celtic games. Is is it is hard to beat, yeah, you know? A massive. Uh, Jody Moylan and Ross Common has been in touch in five three one zero six. As a forty two year old, I remember Panini sticker albums of the early nineties got me interested in Scottish football more than anything else. Motherwell, St Mirren, even Ross County became household names. Fair play, to you, Jody, for your text. On 53106. Going to take a break. Laro, Shane Keegan, and Graham Garkland on Football Saturday here with Thanks to Sky. We're back in a moment. Football on Off the Ball with Sky. Watch big games from the Women's Super League live on Sky Sports. You're welcome back to Off the Ball Saturday here on News Talk. John Duggan with you through to five. You can text us 53106, tweet us at Off the Ball, stream in the conversation as well, listen on News Talk, watch us on the digital and social channels for Off the Ball. For Periscope and Twitter, at Off the Ball, YouTube, Facebook, and on the OTB Sports app for iOS and Android. Search OTB Sports in your app store now to download it if you haven't already. Joined by Laro, the former Republic of Ireland and Liverpool defender, the UEFA Pro Licence coach Shane Keegan, and Graham Gartland, the former League of Ireland and FAI Cup winner, to talk about the beautiful game. FA Cup scores, fourth round. Chelsea 2 Plymouth won a full time West Ham got out of jail 2-1 win at Kidderminster earlier latest scores Crystal Palace 2 Hartlepool 0 it is Everton 3 Brentford 1 Huddersfield 1 Barnsley 0 it is Man City 4 Fulham 1 Peterborough 2 QPR 0 Southampton 1 Coventry 1 Stoke 2 Wigan 0 and Wolves 0 Norwich 1 in the Premier League later 6 o'clock stars Burnley against Watford a real 6 pointer in that one at Turf Moor in Scotland Conor Ronan scored for St Mirren um, they're 1 0 up away to Hibernian. Dundee 1, Ross County 2 is the latest score. Livingston 2, Aberdeen 1, and St Johnston 0. Dundee United 0. We were speaking about players playing in Scotland there, Ross Tierney scoring during the week, Graham. Um, Jamie McGrath off to Wigan. Is that a good move for him? Probably a good chance he's going to be playing in the Championship next season if they get promoted. Yeah, if they get promoted, it's a really good move for him. I think it seemed to be like he's, he's he had an ongoing saga getting out of St Mirren. I know, I know Hibs tried to sign him. Last year, and the deal fell through, and it uh, fell through on deadline day. Um, there was a bit of confusion about it at Hibs because he was sitting there waiting to sign, and something never got done right, and he just missed out on him. And then obviously he refused his move to Aberdeen, so he's 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 gone down south. And um, again, tough league to get out of. You play Saturday, Tuesday down there. It's a bit a little bit relentless, and uh, a lot of travelling down in the UK or down in England compared to Scotland. So. He'll get get more game time and get him fresher and keep him right for when he has to play for Ireland. So, yeah, hopefully it's a good move for him. Ireland have beaten Wales 29-7 in the Six Nations if you're just tuning in. And they got the bonus point as well. Two tries from Andrew Conway, one from Bundiaki, one from Gary Ringrose. Uh, Jeff Hendrick has come off the bench for QPR today. Uh, Shane Keegan, he's on loan from Newcastle. They're high up in the Championship, but they're losing to Peterborough in the FA Cup. All about game time for Jeff Hendrick because he wasn't getting it under uh, Eddie Howe. 100% yeah really really important move for, for our hopes 
John really because he's a player who's kind of really come to the fore um, over the last 18 months he, you know he's he's probably a fella that to a certain extent I, I nearly would have been writing off he, you know you, you felt that there was unfulfilled potential there for a long time and it looked as though that potential was never going to be filled and arguably at club level it still hasn't been but in an Ireland jersey he's he's been as good as anybody really over the last few games he's you know consistently performing very 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 well um, but it's very hard to do that, you know, it'd be very hard just to pop up kind of in the international games six months apart and, and play consistently well if you're not getting regular football. So it was brilliant to see him get out of there and, and put himself in a position. Hopefully, look, it's the fact that he's he's new in there is um, is hopefully the only reason he found himself on the bench today. Hopefully with a bit more training, he'd, he'd be uh, you'd be hoping he'd become a nailed on starter there. Nice story from the week, uh, Graham Cahill Heffernan to AC Milan with the help of Stephen Ireland. Of course, it's the son of Rob and Marion, the the famous athletes. Uh, is this a similar transfer to Kevin De Zeffies in your view? Uh, no, I don't think it is, no. Uh, I think Zeffies one is, is different in that Milan have committed... In the Inter Milan. Milan. In the Milan have committed to Zeffi and that they've given him a longer-term contract. Um, I think it, I think this looks great in terms of another Irish player going to a big club. I think it's all heavily weighed in Milan's favour in terms of... It, it, Seems to me like it's a bit of an extended sort of trial period for the for the kid that there's no guarantees after the loan that AC Milan are gonna say right we'll take him um so he's gonna go there till the summer and see what happens and see how he settles and if, if something doesn't go right he doesn't have any safety net here that he has to settle quick and hit the ground running and and, and there's a lot of pressure on them six months then and I I think that's a little bit unfair on a on a 17 year old to have to do that so. I want to be positive about it because I think it's great that, like you said, an Irish player gets to go to play for a great club like AC Milan. I just, I think we need to put more value in the player as well to go and maybe say, listen, he's on a pro deal at Cork. If you really want them, you really want to commit to him. It has to be longer than it has to be a guarantee that after the loan deal, you are gonna you are gonna buy the player. So that that's a little bit of a red flag for me coming looking at it from that point of view that. What's to stop AC Milan this summer just saying thanks but no thanks and then the kid has a, a bit of a come down then to come back to Ireland in the summer. I'm just thinking worst case scenario. Obviously best case scenario hits the ground running, he does really well and AC Milan to take him on But and hopefully that's the case. I really want them to do well. Okay, well the best luck to Carl Heffern and there when his uh, Isley journey begins. Moon Coin have beaten Baddy Giblin in that AIB Junior Hurling All-Ireland Final in the club scene so 22 points for Moon Coin, 118 for Bally Giblin, a one point victory in that final. And I'm not going to say they should be singing the Rose Moon Coin because I'm sure they are. Uh, the Intermediate Club Hurling final at five o'clock throws in Naysmith Kildare against Kilmoyley of Kerry at Krog Park. So plenty of action there in Gaelic Games. Also, just to give you the result here of the Antrim Limerick Games. So Limerick beating Antrim by 2 9 to 11 points in the Alliance League there in the football, that is in Division 3. Kerry against Dublin throws in at 7 o'clock. Uh, we're just finishing off here with Laro, Graham Gartland and Shane Keegan. A couple of stories from the week uh, just to finish off, Laro. Uh, Honduras took a couple of players off at halftime against the USA in their World Cup qualifying because it was too cold in Minnesota. They lost 3-0, <laughs> minus 16 degrees, uh, tights, gloves, some wore balaclavas. I'm just trying to think back, Laro. You must have played in some extreme conditions, either heat or, or snow when you were a, a footballer when it was a, a yeah. tougher game, Laro, back then. Listen, listen, you would have said to them, run around a little bit more. It makes you warmer. Yeah, you played in all sorts of conditions. Obviously, I remember once <clears throat> at Sunderland, I don't even know how we started the game. It, it was rock hard, it was icy, and then it started snowing. And of course, straight away, we're on at the ref. After like 10, 15, 20 minutes, someone's going to get hurt, someone's going to break their arm, what, all, those, all those kind of things. And Sunderland wants it because they were near the bottom and... Obviously, it, it, it uh, levelled things up because you just couldn't play. And in the end, the ref bowed to the pressure at half-time and, uh, and abandoned the game. But, look, you know, you just... It's, you deal with it, don't you? It's, what, what more can you say? No, nobody ever complains when it's really hot, do they? No, uh, we never should play those games, the 94 World Cup. That was just an absolute travesty. Uh, we know yeah. we no I'd chance. No one complained. John. Steve Staunton complained, and John Aldridge <laughs> actually threw a wobbler on the side of the pitch. <laughs> hey, so there was a few complaints there, Laurel. John, boys, I was I was co-commentating for the BBC, 
and I was in my trunks. It was that hot. <laughs> By the way, I was at the back of the stadium, so no one could actually see. Yeah, well, that's a, that, the, 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 thankfully. Uh, yeah. No live feed but listen, they weren't, no, they weren't, they weren't um, budgie snubs at Spitzers, <laughs> but they were a, a grade up from them, to be fair. <laughs> the, the, the heat, Lara, that must have been, what, 40 degrees at midday? Oh, it was, it was absolutely just, I mean, think, not even so much the heat, John, the humidity. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, you, and you look at the, all the all the like well, Stan Stones one of the light haired boys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. they they should have all been allowed to play in caps. Was that kind of cap on Vinny Morris, I think they it all was had the fact caps we played on, Mexico Vinny. as well that they were used yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. They're oh. all tanned and olive oil skin, and they're great <laughs> looking, great. And then air uh, pasty gingers walk out. No offense, Shane, yeah. sorry. And uh, <laughs> like, oh, here, this isn't gonna go well. But yeah. also, it was it was it was it was uh, just after lunchtime, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, I remember it well. Uh, like we didn't like effectively the World Cup ended at the Giant Stadium, really, for Ireland that year. Yeah, so, of course. Jane, did you have any extreme weather experiences in the League of Ireland? Um, uh, yeah, you'd get some fairly frosty nights, all right. And I'll tell you, you'd be you'd be better even if you are in jersey and a shorts. You're better off on the on the pitch, running around and 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 getting stuck in than you are standing on the sideline, absolutely freezing your arms off. I'll tell you that. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd rather be the lads out in the field. But yeah, you can get some fairly bad ones. There was one. Um, was it last? No, it's probably two seasons ago now, Graham. Is it? Remember, yeah. um, Murph took Galway United across to play right. Shamrock Rovers. And yeah. it was real extreme conditions that day. I think I think there was actually a couple of like a couple yeah. of them has to go to hospital after, didn't That's they? That's it. Yeah, one of our our, our centre back Cole ended up in hospital with hypothermia. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, it took him wow. six. I think it took him six months to come around. Right. Really bad. <laughs> he was. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we shouldn't laugh. Um, five, five, three, one, oh, six. Uh, hey lads, I uh, got two Arsenal tattoos. Yes, I got them young, but still proud of them. And only last week brought my six year old son to his first game against Burnley. He writes Killian and Swords. We were talking about Shane Keegan's tattoo, the Celtic tattoo that he. Definitely Definitely regrets having put yeah. his uh, putting his armor a bit earlier on. Um, <laughs> FA Cup scores: uh, we have uh, Chelsea two, Plymouth one, full time. Kidderminster one, West Ham two, a full time. Crystal Palace two, Hartlepool nil. Uh, Everton three, Brentford one. These are latest scores: Huddersfield one, Barnsley nil. Manchester City four, Fulham one is the latest score. Peterborough two, QPR nil. Southampton one, Coventry one. Stoke two, Ten Man Wigan nil. And Wolves nil, Norwich won. A boost for Adam Eda, who's uh, started today for Norwich against Wolves. Half five, Cambridge against Luton. And also Spurs against Brighton is an eight o'clock start in the FA Cup in the Scottish Premiership. Dundee won, Ross County two, Hibernian nil, St Mirren one, Livingston two, Aberdeen one, and St Johnston nil, Dundee United nil. Ireland 29, Wales seven was a score in the rugby from a bit earlier on. And the Scotland England game has just kicked off at Murrayfield in the Six Nations Championship. That's what's going on. Um, we also had the story as well during the week, just to finish off, lads, about Roberto Carlos, um, an English Sunday League team, Bull in the Barn United, won a raffle on eBay to have Roberto Carlos play for them for one game, the former World Cup winner with Brazil. Which player, past or present, would you most like to play uh, on your team in a Sunday League game? I'd probably, we spoke about this last week about our heroes like you know he's, oh, well said, Paul McGrath's your Paul McGrath was mine yeah I'd, I'd, like, but in terms of like as in like probably be Maradona Maradona I just thought like just to see the stuff that he'd he done and even the small little clips to think um, like I think like, I'm not sure if Mark Laura did you play against Maradona in the 80s, 70s early 80s no uh, we were I think I can't remember what year it was, but we were due to play. Had, had we played in the European Cup final or something? I think we missed out the, the uh, Liverpool boys. Right. But in terms of in terms of who I mine would be Sir Tom Finney. Oh, okay. Preston. Oh, Preston. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. played at Preston, yeah, didn't you? You know, uh, my dad played with him. Um, obviously, being born in Preston and all those kind of things, he was absolutely brilliant. He played all. He played when it was two, three, five formation. Apparently, he played all five yeah. formations across. At the forward line, both for Preston and for England, he dribbled. He dribbled with his left foot down the right down the right wing. It was unheard of. And he'd swap over and dribble with his right foot down the down the left wing. And my dad said, just honestly, unbelievable, great in the air. He was only about five foot eight, so it would be set on. And it's it's in the next couple of weeks, the next like two, couple of months, he would be a hundred. Someone was telling me yesterday. Did you play? Did you play with Johnny Giles, Laurel? Yeah, he, he gave me my uh, debut. Chelsea. 
Because my dad yeah. used to speak about him quite a lot, about how two-footed he was and how he, he always looked forward and played forward. And I, I, I was talking to the lads last week about just watching videos of him when he was younger. And a lot of a lot of the highlights you see was always goals lead scored off of his pass or the pass before yeah. that. And was he that good? Like, Yeah, yeah. Vision, vision was fantastic. And... He had a nasty streak in the best best possible way. He was two he was two footed as a footballer and two footed as a footballer. If you get my meaning. <laughs> And also very much a forward thinker, Lara, when he brought you in, you know, it was it, it, he was ahead of his time. I felt as an Ireland. Well, to, to be fair, in the in, in on my debut, I think we only had about fourteen players. So I actually travelled over. I played the night before for the day before for Preston. And flew over with the um, the referee of the of the match, Bob Matthews, and I think his name was, and we played Poland. And Giles didn't even really know who I was, in all honesty, because because uh, Kelly, Alan Kelly, Jibber, he'd, he'd sorted it all out. But um, no, it was great. Loved him. Loved playing with him. It's fab because he he wanted you to play, which was great. Shane, your Sunday League player, um, P. Gurley, nineties Gaza. Gaza. What a what! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, how en- how enjoyable would that be? Just give him the ball and and sit back and watch him dribble off around half the team and stick it in the top corner. He'd be some he some, some, some Celtic, entertainment man, value. Gaza. You can't be that big. <laughs> a Celtic, man. You can't be true, that big a Celtic true. man and pick Gaza. Yeah, John. Yeah, just, I just said just early nineties. Just a line on Gaza. Lineker, when they were at Tottenham, would always say to you, "He only ever passed to Lineker when he couldn't score." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, Gascoigne was before the knee injury. I think the knee injury. Would you have had, the same. Would you have had Gazette ahead of Hoddle? <sighs> Who's yours? Who would you pick? Hoddle. Oh, Maradona, I'd pick Maradona. Maradona's the best player ever. Um, I know people will argue for Messi or for Pele and that, but Maradona's the best player I've ever yeah. seen. Um, Ma- Maradona was handier, wasn't he? Um, yeah, yeah, very good, Laura. Uh, no, no, uh, Gaza, I saw Gaza before the World Cup in 1990 and he ran the whole game against Man United uh, with Lineker and Gascoigne. So, um, there's just, I, actually, Gaza, yes, but Gaza was there at the peak for a very much a short, shorter period of time, whereas Hoddle was there for, that Spurs for 12 years, you know, and yeah. different type of footballer. Hoggle yeah. was more of an artist, a kind of a creative midfield force. Uh, Gaza was more of a, almost like a box-to-box engine power. Of, of, of power, you know. So we got to leave it there, unfortunately. Laro and Shane, thanks very much for the Football Saturday today. Thank you. Stuff, guys. Thanks, lads. Graham, thank you. Pleasure, John. Uh, great to have you in again on Football Saturday. And thanks for listening, folks, uh, this afternoon. Just give you some updates just before we go on the FA Cup. Uh, we had that win for uh, Kidderminster uh, losing to uh, West Ham as uh, my screen goes. So 2-1 for West Ham against uh, Kidderminster earlier on. Chelsea uh, 2, Plymouth 1, a uh, full-time. Uh, Crystal Palace 2, Hartlepool 0, the latest. Everton have beaten Brentford 4-1. Huddersfield 1, Barnsley 0 is a uh, full-time score. Manchester City have beaten Fulham 4-1 to go into the fifth round. Peterborough 2, QPR 0 is the latest. Um, Southampton 1, Coventry 1 is the latest. Uh, Stoke 2, Wigan 0 and Wolves 0. Norwich won. So these are scores from the FA Cup coming through. Just to let you know, we're back 1-7 to seven tomorrow on Off the Ball. Uh, the Sunday paper review, Gavin Casey and Rory O'Connor and Fiona Hayes and Darren Cave also reflecting on Ireland's Six Nations win over Wales. A feature interview with the former Waterford senior hurling boss, Derek McGrath, will also reflect on the Dublin Racing Festival, the two days of it with Johnny Ward. We'll also bring you as well the latest from the Allianz National Football League. So be sure to join us tomorrow for some great conversations and updates. If you missed any of the OTB Football Saturday show with Mark Lawrence and Shane Keegan and Graeme Gartland, you can find a podcast on the OTB Sports app and wherever you get your pods. Just a word as well about our podcast, folks. Aware of technical issues. We're working on them. Apologies for any glitches you may be experiencing. Please hit automatic download in your settings to enjoy uninterrupted playback. We're back tomorrow. Thank you.